Tadashi Yanai, the story of Japan's second richest billionaire. Before we start, I would like you to hit that red subscribe button so you never miss out on any of our videos. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Smooth Lux. The businessman's beginnings. Yanai was born in mining town within Ube City on February 7th, 1949. The Apple's success didn't fall too far from the tree as his father owned his own clothing store called Min Shop Origari Soji. As he was the only son, Yanai was destined to one day take Yanai's family, actually lived on the top floor of the building, which his father founded in a month after his birth. After high school, attended Waseda University in Tokyo, to where he took classes in the Faculty of Political Science and Economics Department. While he's not known for his work as a pioneering businessman of Japan, he admits to having a lack of drive in his youth. While other students were taking action in university protests, Yanai was much more interested in activities like Mahjong and Slingshot. I was a typical lethargic student. I didn't go to college classes and spent my time playing Mahjong and Pachinko. Yanai admits in an interview with Nippon Sheiko. Under the advisory of his father, Yanai reluctantly stated working for a merchandise store called Jusco, though he wasn't all that private in spending his time selling kitchenware and menswear. So he quit his job after working for less than a year. The 23-year-old billionaire-to-be then returned to his home in Yub to work with his father's store. It was this experience that replenished his fervor for business. I realize not having any preconceived notion is important, says Yanai. That you might want to first try something, that's my learning from this experience. Two years later, Yanai's father stepped down from the business and Yanai became the president of Men's Shop Origari Soju. He looked to rebrand the company, targeting a more youthful demographic by offering items that were both parts appealing and relatable. He took major inspiration from Giordani polo shirts, as they were becoming quite the trend in Hong Kong. He set up a meeting with Giordano International founder Jimmy Lay to pick his brain about business. I went to meet with Jimmy Lay, founder of Giordano, and learned that there are no borders to trade and no borders to manufacturing and sales. The tycoon tells Japan Ford, we're the same age and I thought if he can do it too, so can I. After that, I started doing business in Hong Kong and traveling there nearly every week. The Rise of Unico by the 80s, Yanai had his eyes set on casual apparel as opposed to the sweets and ties that were sold at Yorigiri Soshu. Looking towards mega chain stores like Bittenton and Gap for inspiration, he undertook the huge risk of opening up his next business venture, Unique Clothing Warehouse. The first store opened in Hiroshima in 1984, though it took a while for the store to gain its recognition. Yanai used a savvy business tactic to bring customers rolling in. The concept was to provide a store where customers can shop easily and purchase high quality clothing at reasonable prices. Just like buying a magazine in a bookstore, the store's spokeswoman Beryl Pei Chi Tung recounts in the Yanae's book. The risk certainly paid off, as hundreds more stores were opened within the course of the next four years. Yanae certainly had a success on his hands. In 1988, the name of the booming business was changed to Unique Lo. According to Asia One, Fast Retailing Co. became the new name of Orgo Soju three years later. In 1998, the opening of Unico's Harajuku shaped the store's trajectory for the better. It was when we opened the Harajuku store that made a huge leap, the tycoon says. We focused on environmental improvements and consolidated into a brand under the Unico name, making all of our products low price and high quality. Unico's premier item was their fleece jackets. The jackets were a major trend in Japan with Business Insider reporting an estimated one of four people had one in 1998. Today, the company is valued at $13 billion and operates over a thousand stores worldwide. According to Quartz, fast selling capitalization surpassed that of Zara parent company Inditex by $105.6 million, thus making it the most monetary valuable apparel retailer in the world. Yanae's lavish lifestyle Today, Yanae's net worth stands at $33 billion. As Japan's richest man, it would only be expected he obtains a dazzling real estate portfolio. He currently owns $50 million home just to outside of Tokyo. The property in which Yanae purchased an auction for $73 million in 2001 covers 16,586 square feet of the Woodlands area. The home comes with a driving range and a tea house. He becomes the owner of Hawaii's Plantation Golf Course in 2009, as the billionaire is rather fond of the sport. He purchases the course for $50 million. The following year, he bought yet another course in Kapala Bay. In 2014, he bought a glamorous estate in the exclusively affluent neighborhood in Shibuya. Many highbrow of Japan's business mogul and members of government called Shibuya home, such as Raduken CEO Hiroshio Mikitani. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. And like if you didn't, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also watch the next two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.